we have been doing very simple problems on process analysis using the Little's Law. Um, now let's get into even more involved problems. So the problems that we have been doing till now have this particular feature that it's a single system problem. I had Walmart and I had Snowy Village. So in Walmart, the inventory would come and the inventory leaves. In Snowy Village, the tourist comes and tourist leaves. So all these were single unit systems which could have easily been solved using the Little's Law. Uh, what we have here is a three unit system. So I have a, a, a product that comes in, gets a little bit processed in resource one, goes to resource two, gets more processing done, goes to resource three, gets more processing done, and then finally leaves the system. So we have a slightly different way of addressing such questions. So if you look at the information provided here, um, the widget is made on three resources, resource one, two, and three. Each operator on resource one would take 10 minutes to you know, uh, do the task it has to, and we have two resource operators on resource one. So the net time would be different. Uh, in resource one, I, each resource takes six, each, each operator takes six minutes to do the job, and I have just one operator there. Resources three, each operator takes 16 minutes to do the job, and I have three operators. So that's the kind of information the table gives us. And they're asking us lots of things. So first they're asking us the idea of bottleneck and process capacity. So the concept of process capacity and bottleneck are linked. Imagine three pipes of different widths or different diameters joined together and we push water through those pipes. Now the flow of water would be constrained by the pipe which has the least width or the least diameter, right? So the lowest capacity pipe dictates the capacity of the system of pipes and the same thing is apl applicable here. The resource with the lowest capacity is going to dictate the capacity of the entire system or the all the three processes or all, all the three tasks combined. So let's find the capacities first. So capacities, capacity which would be in units per minute and uh, yeah I wrap this and maybe bring it to the center or copy this format so I can get the yellow color, select this and make um, some kind of table so that there's rows available. All right, so if I look at this, at resource one, um, one operator takes 10 minutes. So in one minute, one operator would do one tenth of the job, right? So if the entire job takes 10 minutes, the operator would be doing one tenth of the job in one minute. So the capacity is, I'm sorry, the capacity is equal to one tenth, one divided by 10. And I have two operators here. So the total capacity of the two operators is this number times two, which is my total capacity, which is 0 0.2 units per minute. I can copy this formula, paste it here, and I get the different capacities. And uh, when we see these numbers, the minimum capacity is for resource two, which is our bottleneck, the resource of the minimum capacity. So to answer the questions which are asked, one, what is my bottleneck? And my bottleneck, I'm sorry for the typo, is clearly resource two with the lowest capacity, right? And it's asked me what is my process capacity. So process capacity is the capacity of the bottleneck, which is equal to um, whatever is the minimum of this uh, entire um, capacities, which is 0 0.1667 units per minute. So that's my lowest capacity. And that's going to be the capacity of my pro uh, process. Next, um, the problem asks me that, hey, if the market gives can absorb a maximum of eight units per hour. Now we've changed something. Everything we've been talking in units per minute and the market is units per hour. So first stop, let's convert that into um, units per minute. So market demand is equal to eight divided by 60 
which is equal to units per minute. Now, as we can see, the market demand is smaller is or is lower than the capacity of the process, which is 0 0.16. And since market demand is lesser than the capacity of the process, well, we can serve that. But anyways, so let's get, read the problem ahead. Uh, what is the flow rate if the demand is 8 units per uh, hour? Well, since the market needs 8 units per hour, there's no point in doing more. And so the flow rate will also be 8 units per hour. Or it will be 0 0.133 units per minute, which is the lowest, right? The constraint of what I can do versus what the market wants, whichever is lower. So that's my flow rate. And then it's asking us that given this flow rate, what's the utilization? So utilization, we follow the same principle as before. What is actually done versus what can be done. So here the, the, the flow rate for the process in units per minute. Let me expand this a little bit so we can fit it. So the flow rate here is equal to um, this number, which is fixed. So I fix it. And then I copy this here. And my final answer is my utilization, which is equal to what is done, which is this divided by what can be done, which is this. And I can convert this into percent by clicking this key here. And I can increase a two decimals if I want to. Yes. So this gives me the utilization of the three processes. That resource one, the utilization is 66.67%. Resource two, it's 80%. And resource three is 71.11%.